than there's the a, older people. There's a whole organization in um, Japan that's formed called Save the Children of Fukushima. Mm. Uh, and it's, it's to protect the children who have been exposed and are con receiving ongoing exposures. Why it's happening early in the accident, um, the U.S. government, um, under the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, and um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission downplayed the whole accident. I think there's some important facts that should come out here. First off, Hillary Clinton reached an agreement with the Prime Minister of Japan only a few weeks after the accident that the U.S. would not um, push aside Japanese imports, that we would continue to support the economy because they knew how devastating it was. Emails just came out, was it a month ago, um, that showed that the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission of the United States, knew how bad the accident was nine days before the people of Japan were warned and evacuated. And so the governments were playing with people's lives in an effort to maintain economies at fur full scale. So it's all about money. It's clearly about money. The utilities are, are playing a game about money, and the regulators are playing a game about money. In the U.S. and Canada, all the monitoring on the West Coast was shut down. And we have independent monitoring from different universities and different independent labs that show a tremendous amount of radiation came to the U.S. And, and yet our governments say, oh, we don't need to monitor anymore because there's nothing coming here. Mm -hmm. So it, it's... This yeah, is disgusting. An example is that the uh, FDA, we get millions of fish a year, and the FDA has sampled 186 of them for radiation. We're, we're just not testing. It's on the, you know, if you don't, if you don't know, it's, it's not there. It's a very comfortable place to be. What you, what you don't know can't hurt you. It's like the ostrich putting your head in the sand and you don't see it, so there's no threat there. Yeah. Now, we're seeing this in, um, there's a concerted effort within the nuclear community, and, and that's the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Japanese industry, the, the, the IAEA, and the people that produce nuclear power. Um, are, are deliberately downplaying the significance of low-level radiation. It, it, there's a, a, a worldwide push on the, in the, those organizations that are controlled by the money that builds nuclear power plants to downplay the significance of, of, um, of the radiation that the people in Fukushima are receiving. The Frontline did a, a piece three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, Frontline did a piece and they had a Japanese scientist on saying that um, the, the people in Fukushima could get 20 millisieverts, uh, and it, that was no problem. And the frontline guy just bought it. It was uh, Miles O'Brien. He just bought it and never questioned it. When you, when you say that uh, people could get 20 millisieverts, it means that you could as a, go in to the area or where, and be exposed to 20 millisieverts, and you would have no health problem. Right. Right, and that would come from the what ground. What does 20 millisieverts represent? Well, I'll kick it over to the, the American system of REM. It's 2 REM, which is the equivalent of several uh, pretty, pretty severe x-rays to your brain or something like that. And what, what, what we did on, our, on the site to try to say, th one, it was just patently wrong, but we went to published reports that the National Academy of Science had out, and we showed that, uh, in fact, the uh, population in those zones, for every year they were in there, one out of every 500 people would get a cancer from that exposure that this guy said was no big deal. But it's more important than that. That was a blended average of, of old people and young people. And of course, you know, old people are gonna die from something else before they ever get a cancer. But children, and especially young girls, are, are five times more susceptible, and even 10 times more when they're very, very young. So the number really works out that for the kids in Fukushima, the chances of a cancer for every year they're in that town are one out of 20 to one out of 100. So essentially in, a, in one class of 20 kids, one of those kids is gonna get a cancer. And there's a lot of those that never came up and, and, um, and it used industry data. So that's an example of how the, uh, the American press isn't asking the probing questions of the industry, and the industry is just overwhelming them with misinformation. And at the same time, a whole country such as Germany 
has reacted to the Fukushima disaster by putting in place the plan to, to uh, completely end nuclear power reactors in their country. And also, uh, France, there has been unrest and demonstrations in France, which is a, a, a premier nuclear power country. And also in Italy, they're going to phase out nuclear power reactors. But why the United States is far behind? And here in Vermont, where we have Energy Vermont Yankee uh, uh, now uh, pushing the uh, Vermont Public Service Board to uh, to, re to uh, extend the license for 20 more years, just to rubber stamp what the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has uh, has put in place for us. It seems as though everything is going on just as before. And as, as you say, it, it, it's terrible because we're, we're not getting the accurate information that, and that even on a, a supposedly expose program such as Frontline where they have the scientist saying that this dosage of, the, of 20 millisieverts is okay for children and for others. It, it's, it's just, it's mm -hmm. shocking. It is shocking and, and uh, distressing. When I, Margaret, when I was on your program a few years ago, we talked about the German study that showed uh, the increase in cancers surrounding plants in Germany. It was a German study. Right. And um, the uh, doctor, um, Winfred Eisenberg came to uh, Fletcher Allen and spoke, and I got to hear him and meet him. And now, just two weeks ago, the French came out with a, a study in France that substantiates the German study that shows that operating nuclear power plants give off constant emissions, and those emissions do cause cancers to the population living around the plant. And especially early childhood cancers, yes, yes. and it, it's the ratio increases as the child is moved closer to the nuclear power reactor, and that brings to mind Dr. Helen Caldicott's editorial in the New York Times uh, in maybe April of uh, 2011 after. Fukushima, and she set forth the case against, against uh, the radiation, you know, poisoning us from the nuclear reactors. And their, their answer was, somebody published a study called the Oxford Study and about radiation and studying it in England, <laughs> and their conclusion was that, that only children of rich people will get leukemia faster than people who are living near a nuclear power plant. That was the conclusion of that stupid study called the oh, Oxford it, study. It was a bogus. It, it was, was a bogus, bogus theory. There's another, yeah. uh, two, th two things really quick. Steve Wing, Dr. Steve Wing, um, who I, I really respect his work, he had a study that showed that there clearly were cancers after Three Mile Island, that the authorities used techniques to mask the, 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 the cancers. But he just published another study and it looks at the studies like the Kick study in Germany and the, and the um, uh, the French study, and he basically says um, we're, we're not getting all the data correctly even in those because we're looking at this broad population and really the w best way to look for cancers in a population is to look at the young people, not the broad population because you know, old people are going to die of something else before they're ever exposed. So, so Wing's got a study out, it's only a, a week or two old, that talks about if you're going to do it right, here's how you should structure a study. And in fact, all these numbers, like the Kick study and the thing in, um, in, in France, will in fact have higher numbers than, than the, the, the techniques that they're using. But the other thing is that uh, the, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission clearly has not learned the lesson. Just yesterday, they published a study that if there's a severe accident, um, in America, that everything will work just fine afterward and the people will behave appropriately and uh, all the backup systems will work. And the chances of an American dying of a cancer from a nuclear accident are one in a billion. Now, there's not that many Americans, so they're basically saying if there's a nuclear accident in America, no one needs to worry. And that's just last yesterday. And, and the data produced by Dr. Wing and another recent study that Dr. Wing didn't do, but I can't remember the name of the scientist did in post Three Mile Island accident. There are a lot of cancers and a lot of deaths. And, and as they're doing this, they're not talking about um, what's happening 
in terms of other health effects like the cesium that's absorbed that's released and absorbed in into children that in Chernobyl that caused a thing called Chernobyl heart where the cesium is absorbed into the muscle in the body uh, just like potassium and so the body sucks it right up and it causes um, malformed hearts and, and, and kids are quite ill and, and, and dying and you know so there's many many other illnesses that have been tracked to um, radiation exposures that are not even being considered in, in these studies. They're just talking about cancers. And I'm afraid that the Japanese government and, and the Japanese medical establishment are going to try their very best to, to, uh, to hide the numbers coming out of Fukushima Prefecture. You know, they'll, uh, already we've seen uh, where national uh, death rates were, have been published in Japan, though not available in the areas near the Fukushima reactor. For whatever reason, that data is not available for the last nine months. Why is that? Yeah. Um, so I'm afraid that the medical community is going to just follow the Japanese government and try to downplay the significance of this. But this time, we have the Internet, and, and that's the difference. You know, the, the, our site and, and others have been really instrumental in finding ways for that information to get out um, that don't rely on mainstream media and that don't rely on governmental organizations. And that's what Maggie uh, has done so well on. And um, that, that's what makes our site special, I think, is that we try to um, crowdsource. We try to get information. We're working with a number of scientists across the world. And so there's an international group. Uh, one, of the, one, one of the groups that we're working with, for example, on the radiation testing he was talking about before is safecast.org. And Safecast is a crowdsourced team. And that team is amazing. They've taught all different normal people how to um, test for radiation and how to do appropriate samples. And scientists are working with them. And then they've charted all these measurements on maps. And um, you can go and, and see their website. And in the same way, uh, we've produced, Fairwinds has produced 50 videos um, talking about the different nuclear power plant issues across the, com the country. And that's at fairwinds.com. And um, we will, um, in a few minutes, uh, show a, vi a video for your viewers. Okay. And, you know, I know that... Um, you had originally uh, planned for only a, a few more minutes, so I don't know if you want to continue that well, schedule. Well, I, I, I think that uh, if you can say that we have touched upon major issues for the moment, which I find so disturbing, I, I can't even uh, articulate how disturbed I feel about the things that you have told me and are, are public now. And the thing is that this whole nuclear power reactor uh, industry is chugging along. There are new power reactors that are planned in Georgia and uh, in South Carolina, those two states. And, all of, and, and again, we have to be aware that it is taxpayers' money that is doing this and all of the, t the political talk about too much government and everything like that. We, we, we the people are the government. We are the people who are funding all the research and development, including the research and development that uh, Bill Gates is doing for the new uranium uh, uh, nuclear power reactors that he's handing over to China. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a terribly frightening issue and I'm so disappointed in uh, Bill Gates. Yes, Bill, Bill Gates, we are very disappointed in you and uh, it, it, it's a horrible thing because you can have all of the commercials in the world and they are commercials about how you're giving free books away to people. <laughs> But, uh, but meanwhile, you're promoting this, this horrible, horrendous industry and the uranium mining in Australia, which was just opened up uh, recently again. And uh, Maggie, speak to the, about the Bill Gates thing if, for just a, a few minutes. And, uh, well, Arnie has done a tremendous job, and it would be enough for a whole show if you'd like us to come back okay, I hope to you talk back. about the new reactors. And he's done a lot on the AP-1000 and other designs and their lack of safety. 